The Holy Gospel according to John, the 8th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. How many things do you know that are 500 years old and don't look at each other? I remember going to Philadelphia and seeing the Liberty Bell and thinking, man, there's a bell with a lot of history, but you know what? Nowhere close to 500 years old. I used to live in Florida. I've been to St. Augustine many, many times. It's often cited as the oldest city in the United States or in the Americas, and it's not 500 years old. It's getting close. 35 more years, and I won't be able to use that as an example, but by then... 500th anniversary of the Reformation is done, so, all right. The truth is, unless you've done a lot of study and visiting of Native Native American sites in our country or in North America, you probably haven't been around a man-made structure in this area that's more than 500 years old. But what is 500 years old today? Hmm. Today we commemorate the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, 500 years that began with a monk who saw some things about the church that he thought that we could do differently, some things that we could do better, maybe some things that the church needed to stop doing. And he wrote these ideas down on paper, and the story goes that he took them to the church at Wittenberg, and he nailed them to the doors. I've been fortunate enough to stand by those doors, although they had a barricade in front of them. And I thought to myself, it would take a pretty manly swing to get that nail in that door. So who knows? But what Martin Luther wanted was a conversation about the church. He wasn't trying to start a church. He was trying to reform the church that he loved. And the rest, as they say, is... We say that the Lutheran Church as we know it is not a reformed church, not a reformed church, not a been there, done that, got the t-shirt church, but a reforming church. You catch the difference? We are a church that is constantly seeking to understand the truth about who God is. We are a church constantly seeking to understand God's call for us in our lives. Now I provide you with this spoiler alert. At the ends of the pews are slips of paper. Everyone needs to have a slip of paper in their hand. At the end of this sermon, I'm going to invite you to write something down on this piece of paper, your own personal thesis, if you will, about who you think the church needs to be. Who you think the church needs to be in our world today. But before you start writing, I suggest listening to the sermon a little bit more. And also, I want you to think about how your life will influence who you think the church needs to be. How will your life influence who you think the church needs to be? How will what you do, how will what you bring to the table, to the conversation, the action, or the conversation make a difference? What truth do you know that will influence your response? Ready? Truth is a central theme for our Reformation text today. Truth. The same truth that Martin Luther poured over scripture for countless hours, days, weeks, and months, and years to understand. In our reading from Jeremiah, we hear, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall know me. For the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is God's promise 
after God's people failed to keep their end of the covenant the first time around. Our God is a God of second chances. Our God loves us and wants to be in relationship with us. Our God promises to forgive our sins and remember them no more. This would be where, if you were tweeting, you would put hashtag truth. Our psalm holds it in its holds in it a powerful reminder and precious hope. Pay attention especially to the words about fear, even when everything else is falling apart around our psalmist. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar with foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. The message here is that you and I can trust God to be present with us, to be our help in trouble, to be our refuge and strength as we go through this life and the worst that it has to offer. Truth. Our reading from Romans reminds us that God is an impartial God and loves all. All are loved the same because we all share the same realities. For there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. All have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God. All are now justified by God's grace as a gift. This is possibly the most central message of the Reformation for Luther and for us. We all have sinned. There isn't anything that we can do about it, but thanks be to God, God has done something about it through Jesus Christ. God did it. We didn't earn it. The truth is that we can only live our lives in gratitude and in response for what God has first done for us. And finally, the words Jesus speaks in our lesson from John are promises for us. These words remind us of the hope we have for living our lives as people of faith, the encouragement we need to dig into our lives of discipleship for taking the next step in our faith journey. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. The truth will make you free. I love that promise from Jesus. It inspires me and it gives me hope. How about you? We have the opportunity to dig more deeply into God's word individually and as a congregation. We have the opportunity to lean into what God is doing around us as a congregation and ask God how we can join in. We have the opportunity to receive the sacraments, to hear God's promise through water and word at the baptismal font and celebrate the new life we have in baptism. We have the opportunity to be fed at the table the Lord's table, and to remember God's word and the promise of forgiveness, truth. Well, the church is a lot different than it was 500 years ago. For many of us sitting in this sanctuary today, the church looks a lot different than it did when we were younger, right? What does it mean to be a part of a church that is a part of an ongoing reformation of Christ's church here at Lord of Life? What do we hang on to and what do we need to let go of as we seek to follow God's call to serve? What truths are central to us as persons of faith? And what are you willing to do to be a part of what God is calling us to? Earlier I told you that you would be writing your own thesis about who you think the church needs to be in our world. I asked you to think about your life and how it would influence that future for the church. How what you will do, what you will bring to the conversation might make a difference. What truth do you know that will influence your response? Let's start writing, or if you prefer, drawing. And during the hymn of the day and a brief time after the sermon, 
we'll write our responses and then we'll bring them forward to our own door. We won't nail them, we have sticky tack. But still, we're going to put our thesis on the door and start the conversation. The truth we need to remember on this day is that God loves us. God has loved you. God loves you now. God will love you no matter what. God did it first, and we respond with our very lives. How? By loving God and loving our neighbor. And that is the truth. Amen.